today we are going to start the next chapter that is about plants uh, chapter that is chapter number 8 diversity among plant so diversity among plants mean uh, variation among plants varieties of the plant uh, in this chapter we will only focus on a plant what are their properties what are their characteristics first uh, all those living organisms which are autotrophic in nature autotrophic mean auto mean self trough mean nourishment those which have the ability to prepare their own food they are called autotroph so mean they are talking about plants second plants uh, must be eukaryotes eukaryotes mean they have a true nucleus they have membrane bounded originalis are present third plants are multicellular mean they are consist of many cells and plants are sessile or stationary uh, mean they cannot move they have no locomotory organ they are fixed in a positions next uh, plant have cell wall but their cell wall is made up of cellulose Next, uh, plants uh, actually uh, they are divided into uh, different classification based. I mean, they may be herb, they may be shrub, or they may be tree. Some plants are annual, some are biennial, and some are perennials. Plants have both sometimes self pollination and as well as show cross pollinations. So they depend upon their reproductive system. Uh, plants, their possible ancestor of plants, that is uh, algae. Mean kingdom protista is the possible ancestor of uh, plants. But uh, which group of protista, protista have uh, categorized into three groups? Uh, that is plant-like protists. These are the possible ancestor of the plant. And plant-like protist that is called is phylum chlorophyta or green algae. Why both have similarities? Both have, uh, both are autotrophic in nature, both have chlorophyll A and B, and both have a uh, store food in the form of starch. The differences among plants and algae is that, that the uh, plants give protection to their six organs, six cells, and their zygote or their embryo, while algae cannot. So that's why, uh, Plants are separated from algae and cara is uh, considered to be the possible ancestor through which some changes occur in them and to develop the plants. Uh, next, uh, plants, uh, most abundant plants, they are the flowering herbs. Flowering herbs are most abundant in nature in round about uh, uh, 0.5 million species of plant that has been reported. Uh, plants have chlorophyll A, B, and carotenoid is present through which they perform the process of photosynthesis. I mean photosynthesis occurred through this. Uh, plants lake, plant cells lake the centriole. But uh, in lower case, in lower vascular plants, I mean lower plant, they uh, sometimes they also have a centriole. Cent centriole is present in lower plant, while in higher plant they don't have a centriole, centriole is absent and their function is performed by the beta tubulin. Tubulin perform their function. They have a large single vacuoles. Uh, due to this single large vacuoles, there is, they push the nucleus toward uh, one side. So that is the difference in their cell as well. Uh, in the plants, uh, the phragmoplast formation occur during the time of cell division means there is no proper envisionation of cytoplasm of the cell membrane to divide the cytoplasm. So that's why the Golgi bodies, there's an organelle is involved to develop a cell wall in between the division phases of a cell. So phragmo, that's called as a phragmoplast formation. So these are the general characteristics of plant. Now, Next, we are going to discuss the evolutionary origin of the plants. Uh, in this topic, uh, we have divided uh, the different eras, or uh, we also call it as a periods. So, these era or periods, these are one is called Cenozoic, second is called Mesozoic, third is called Paleozoic, and fourth is called as Proterozoic. In Cenozoic era, that 770 million years ago, the mean this 
continuous periods, the angiosperms are dominated during this era. So that's why we have shown through this diagram. So angiosperms are dominated during this era. Uh, in case of the Cenozoic era, the angiosperm is dominated. While the Mesozoic era, the angiosperms they are dominated. They are dominated. Mean most abundant. In poly Paleozoic era, the forms algae and fungi they are dominated. And uh, on, on the other sides, if we discuss the animals, in case of animals in Cenozoic era, invertebrates, birds and as well as mammals they are dominated. While in case of Mesozoic era, reptiles are dominated. And in the Paleozoic era, amphibians are dominated. So the life started from Proterozoic era, that is three billionth year ago. That was a bacteria. And that was reported by Barg, Horn, and Scott. They confirmed their existence that this bacteria that was dominated on Earth. Now, in this era or period, there is a sub era or sub period is also present. In Cenozoic, there is a quaternary and tertiary era. In Mesozoic, there is a Crustacean, Jurassic, and Triassic era. While in Paleozoic era, they have a Permian, Car Carboniferous, Devonian, Silurian, Ordovirian, and Scambrian period is present. During the Permian and Triassic time period, during Permian and Triassic time periods, ferns are flourished and well dominated. They are flourished and well dominated. While during Triassic and Jurassic time period, so during this time periods, the ammonite mollusk they were dominated. These are those mollusk. Uh, these having a shells. These are called as ammonite mollusk. So ammonite mollusk they are dominated during this time periods. So these are the actually different era or time period during different living organism. They are being developed and dominated. Now, uh, plants uh, actually kingdom plantia which uh, is divided into vascular and non-vascular plant. Vascular plants are those plants which having a vascular bundle means xylem and phloem is present. While in case of non-vascular plants, so though they don't have a vascular bundle. Accordingly to old classification system, we also discuss with them as well. Uh, we have divided all the living organism into three domains. Domain which is also called a super kingdom. Domain that is also called a super kingdom. Dr. Carl Weiss, he studied the archaea and bacteria so he, when he studied so he introduced the domain he introduced the domain which is also called as super kingdom uh, by studying the ribosomal rna of archaea and bacteria he put forward that these are different from one another even in their cell wall, even in their cell membranes, in their enzymes, their mechanism processes. So that's why three domains were produced. One is archaea, one is bacteria, and another is eukaryota. In eukaryota, we are going to discuss the four kingdom. One is called is kingdom fungi. One is called is kingdom protista. One is called is kingdom plantia. And one is called is kingdom animalia. So here we are going to discuss the kingdom plantia. Kingdom plantia, accordingly to old classification system, we divided them into two sub kingdom. One is called a sub kingdom Thelophyta, while another one is called a sub kingdom Embryophyta. So these are the two sub-kingdom 
based on old classification system. Now, the embryophyta, why we call them embryophyta? Embryo term actually we used for fertilized egg. We used for fertilized egg. That is called is embryo. While phyta mean plant. Phyta mean plant. Now, telophyta. Why we call them telophyta? Actually, their body is thallus. Body is thallus. Thallus mean which cannot be differentiated into root, stem and leaves. So they have a two group, one is called is algae and another one is called fungi. So that is the old classification system. So nowadays algae we discuss them in plant like protest. So plant like protest we put them in kingdom plant here, in kingdom protesta. So now that has been discussed in a kingdom protista. LG have total 18,000 species are included. In study board LG is called is phycology. Study board LG is called phycology. Now fungi we discussed them in kingdom fungi. And they have total 80,000 species. And that study about fungi that is called is mycology. So that's why this uh, portion that is no need over here because telophyta sub kingdom that is being removed. So only we focus on sub kingdom embryophyta. Now this embryophyta, this sub kingdom has been divided into two phylum. One is called is phylum bryophyta, while another one is called is phylum tracheophyta. So they has been divided into two phylums. Why? Because we have a sequence that D, K, P, C, O, F, G, in S. So that is the sequence, shortcutly for memorization, we call them Dr. Han PCO for girls special. So why? Because species is the basic unit of classification. A group of similar organism which can freely interbreed and produce fertile offspring and have constant number of chromosomes, that's called species. Similar species combined together to form genus, similar genus combined together to form family, similar families combined together to form order, similar order combined together to form class, similar classes combined together to form phylum, and similar phylum combined together to form kingdom, and similar kingdom combined together to form domain. So we have a three domain, archaea, bacteria, and eukaryota. In domain we have a Eukaryota, we have a four kingdom. Here we are going to discuss the kingdom plantia. And inside kingdom plantia, we are going to discuss the two phylum. One is called phylum tracheophyta and this is called phylum bryophyta. Why we have classified them? What is the reason? The reason is based upon the vascular bundle. So on the basis of vascular bundle, we have classified them into two phylum, phylum bryophyta and phylum tracheophyta. Phylum bryophyta also called is amphibious plant. Why we call them amphibious plant? Because they need water for fertilization process. It's also called is gregarious plant. Actually, these plants are present in water near to the water, so that's why if water is present, they are wet. In the absence of water, they become dry. And again, getting water, they become green. So that's why that's called as a gregarious plant. This phylum bryophyta is also considered to be thallophatic. Thallophatic means which cannot be differentiated into root, stem, and leaves. And they lack vascular bundle. 
mean vascular bundle is absent vascular bundle is absent xylem and phloem is absent they have no true root no true stem no true leaves they lack flower they lack seeds because they reproduce through spores now this uh, bryophyta is divided into three classes one is called is class musci second one is called is class hepatisia hepa tisia in third one is called is class anthotherosia so these are the three different classes antho cirrosia so class musci also called is mosses class hepatisia also called is liver wort and class anthotherosia is also called is horn worts these are their common name class musci one of their example is called is uh, funeria while another is example is called is polytrichum while the example of class hepatisia that's marcensia while the example of anthotherosia that's called is anthocerus that's an example this funeria that is considered to be monoecious monoecious mean that both male and female sex organ are present in same body while diviscious that's polytrichum diviscious mean that male and female sex organ are different in different plant body marcensia that is diviscious while anthocerus that is monoecious monoecious we call for them a shortcut we call them bmh b m h now b stand for bisexual and m stand for monoecious monoecious and h stand for hermaphrodite so they means that uh, male and female sex organ are present in same body now here we are going to discuss phylum tracheophyta the question is that that why it's called is phylum tracheophyta it's because that tracheotrum derived from tracheids tracheids so the tracheotrum derived from tracheids tracheids in phyta mean plant so those plant in which tracheid cells is present and these tracheid cell that is of a xylem xylem is made up of one tracheids and another vessel elements so basic function of xylem is to conduct water with dissolved mineral and salt so xylem is present obviously phloem will be present so phloem distribute food on the basis of uh, that the form of sucrose while plant stores food plant store food uh, in the form of starch distribute in the form of sucrose so phylum tracheophyta mean vascular bundle is present in case of tracheophyta vascular bundle is present this phylum tracheophyta is divided into four subphylum one is called is subphylum silopsida first one is called is phylum silopsida second one is called is subphylum lycopsida third one is called is subphylum sphenopsida while fourth one is called is subphylum teropsida so these are the four subphylum of phylum 
trico fighter because in classification system we can use prefixes sub and super. Subphylum Silapsida, common name that is called whisk fern. That is called is whisk fern. Whisk jadi ko kate, jadi yo kitara. Subphylum Lycopsida is called is club moss due to their shape. Subphylum Sphenopsida is also called horse tail or also called arthrophyta based upon their shape while heteropsida these are considered to be heterogeneous they are the heterogeneous now subphylum silopsida member of the silopsida they are considered to be homosporous homosporous mean they produce same kind of spores all the spores that is produced they are of same kind same size Club moss like copsida, they are also considered to be homosporous, but exceptional cases is present except Slegenella. Slegenella is a heterosporous. Sphenopsida, they are also homosporous. Now, subphylum Tyropsida is further divided into three classes. One is called class. Felicenia. Second one is called is class Gymnosperm. And third class that is called is class Angiosperm. So these are the three classes class Felicenia, class Gymnosperm, and class Angiosperm. So the Felicenia, these are also homosporous. While gymnosperm and angiosperms, these are heterosporous. Mean they produce two different kind of spores. One small in size and another are larger in size. Subphylum Silopsida, their common example, they have a living genera is also present. Their living genera, that is Silotum. And Massipeterus. Massipeterus and Silotum, that is their examples. Living genera. And they have also the fossil genera as well. So their fossil genera, that is Rhenia, Coxonia, Rhenia, Coxonia, Silophytans. Silo, Phyton, and Harniophytons. Harniophytons. Rhenia, Coxonia, Harniophytons, and uh, these are the Silophytons. So these are the different examples of uh, subphylums. Silops, subphylum like Silopsida. Uh, so Silopsida have a Rhenia, Coxonia, Silophytans, and uh, Harniophyton. Now coming toward the subphylum Lycopsida. Their living genera, they include, that is Lycopodium, Isoatis, Isoatis, Phyloglossum, Phyloglossum, and Slegenella. So these are the living genera, while fossil genera, fossil genera of Lycopsida, that is Sigillaria, Sigillaria and Lepidodendrons. So that is their living genera. Coming toward the Sphenopsida. So their living genera, they contain, that is called is equisitums. That is their living genera, equisitums. While one of them, they have an extinct species is also present, that is called is calamites. So calamites, that is a extinct species. The example of Felicenia, that is adiantum. 
at the end term actually grow near the walls of the wells and running water nears at the end term pterus drip terus drip terus and terrariums so these are the examples of uh, thylacinia coming toward the gymnosperms one example group that's called pinus pinus are considered to be monoecious mean both male and female sex organ are present in same body one is called cycads cycads are dioecious while the angiosperms angiosperms are furtherly divided into two groups one is called is monocoty leden and another is called is dicoty ledens monocoty ledens for example wheat rice these are the monocoty ledens so they have a single coty leden while dicoty leden have a two or there are other several differences are there monocoty leden the rules of venations the vein in the leaf they are parallel while in dicoty leden a reticulate venation is present Uh, mon dicotyledon pentamerous and monocotyledon they are trimerous so monocotyledon round about 50000 species are present in dicotyledon 2 lakh species are reported so overall species in angiosperm that is 2 lakh 50000 species while in case of this gymnosperm Around about 700 species are present. In case of Thylacinia, they have 10,000 species have been reported. Thylacinella, Thylacinella, around about 300 species are present. While one of the species that is called is Lycopodiums. This like like Copsida, they actually their sporangia have a. Uh, leaf like structure which retain water let's call ligule so ligule is absent in this lycopodiums that's absent in lycopodium so now this uh, whole plantia the pollination actually process through different methods if they need water this process of fertilization mechanism pollination mechanism we call them hydrophilous because they need water while those which need insects they are called is entomophilous entomology insects while they need wind that's called is anemophilous so there are three different procedures for pollination purposes now one of them we term use that is called is cryptogame what is mean by cryptogames so those plant which reproduce through spores that is called is cryptogames so those plant which reproduce through spore that is called is cryptogames for example for example lg reproduce through spores for example bryophytes they also reproduce through spores in israel is silopsida lycopsida sphenopsida and phylacinia but here we use another term that is called is lower vascular plant so lower vascular plant is also called as pteridophytes what are these so lower vascular plant mean those vascular plant it's mean they have a vascular bundle so those vascular plant which having those vascular plant which reproduce plant which reproduce through through spores that is called is lower vascular plant for example so for example subphylum subphylum silopsida now subphylum silopsida these are the lower vascular plant but it produce through spores subphylum lycopsida they are also the vascular plant but it produce by spore subphylum sphenopsida 
These are the also low vascular plants having a vascular bundle reproduced through spores and one of the class, class Felicenia. So Felicenia is also vascular plants but they reproduce through spores. And one is called is higher vascular plant. So this higher vascular plant also called is Pineriogames. Pineriogame. What are these plants? So these are the vascular plants. Mean those vascular plants which reproduce which reproduce through seeds. That is called is higher vascular plants, also called phenereogams. For example, angiosperm and as well as gymnosperms. So angiosperm and gymnosperms, angiosperm and gymnosperms, they actually uh, reproduce through seeds. Another thing we are going to differentiate in cryptogams, in cryptogams are in a case of bryophytes. In case of bryophytes, the gametophytic plant body is dominant. In case of bryophytes, gametophytic plant body is dominant. These are the bryophytes. So in case of bryophytes, so those plants in which gametophytic, gametophytic plant body is dominant, dominant. Autotrophic, if it is autotrophic, obviously that is independent. If it is dominant, it means that is larger and haploid. Gametophytic, those plant in which gametophytic plant body is dominant, autotrophic, independent, larger and haploid and reproduce, reproduce gametes by mitosis. So these plants produce gametes by the process of mitosis while while their sporophytic plant body is, is recessive. If it, it is recessive, it must be small. It is heterotrophic. If it is heterotrophic, it means that is dependent. That is dependent and diploid. So, produce spores by the process of meiosis. By the process of meiosis. Keep in your mind that in plants, the gametes are produced through mitosis because gametophytic plant body is a dominant in haploid. While uh, in case of bryophytes, while the sporophytic plant body which is dominated in uh, tracheophytes, so uh, they produce spore by the process of meiosis. It means a conclusion based if we study. So we can conclude that uh, in plants the gametes are produced by the process of mitosis because gametophytic plant body is a haploid. So plant body is haploid, I will produce gametes by the process of mitosis. So in case of bryophytes, the gametophytic plant body is dominant and at is larger and is haploid. While what about uh, tracheophytes? In case of tracheophytes, the sporophytic, the sporophytic plant body, the sporophytic plant body plant body is dominant 
If it is dominant, it means it is larger and is autotrophic. If it is autotrophic, it means it is independent. It is independent. And, and diploid. So produce spores by meiosis. Spores are always produced through meiosis. While gametes are always produced through mitosis. While now here we have two types of tracheophytes. One is called is lower vascular plant. So lower vascular plants are those plants which reproduce through spores. In case of lower vascular plants, the gametophytic plant body plant body is recessive it is small it is autotrophic independent independent and haploid so produce gametes by mitosis. And what about higher vascular plants? In case of higher vascular plants, in case of higher vascular plants, the gametophytic plant body is also recessive. It's also small, but here it is heterotrophic. If it is heterotrophic, obviously it is dependent. That is dependent, but is implied. So produce gametes by mitosis. Now, kingdom plantia. Kingdom plants here have a bryophytes and tracheophytes. And tracheophytes have a lower vascular plants and higher vascular plants. In case of bryophytes, in case of bryophytes, the bryophytes gametophytic plant body, gametophytic plant body is dominant, larger, it is uh, autotrophic, independent, and haploid. So produce gametes by the process of mitosis. While there their sporophytic plant body is small, recessive, heterotrophic, dependent, and diploid. So produce spore by the process of meiosis. It's opposite to the tracheophytes. In tracheophyte, sporophytic plant body is larger, dominant, autotrophic, independent, and diploid. So they produce spores by meiosis. While in case of lower vascular plants, Autotrophic, that is a gametophytic plant, but is autotrophic. In a higher vascular plant, that is a heterotrophic. So that's a difference. But keep in your mind that uh, gametes must be produced through the mitosis, and spore must be produced through the meiosis. In bryophytes, gametophytic plant body is dominant, while in tracheophytes, sporophytic plant body is dominant. Now, next, uh, uh, that is, we are going to discuss the bryophytes. Uh, the life cycle of bryophytes. Bryophytes, uh, these are called is bryophytes, these are called is phylum bryophyte. Phylum bryophyta. So phylum bryophyta, that is non-vascular plant. Phylum bryophyta is a non-vascular plant. They are also called as amphibious plant because they need water for fertilization and they are gregarious in nature. They have no root, no stem and no leaves. They have no flowers and they have no seeds because they only reproduce through the spores. They reproduce through the spores. And 
diffusion uh, by process by diffusion water is absorbed along with the minerals and salt and through diffusion process they distribute the food item as well so they have no proper circulatory system is compared to trichophyta mean they have vascular bundle is present uh, bryophytes total 20000 species are present in all of them they are homosporous they produce same kind of spores if we uh, discuss the life cycle of funaria funaria is considered to be monoecious so Let's suppose uh, that is our funaria examples we are going to take. So funaria, here we are going to mention that they have a gametophytic plant body. The gametophytic plant body of funaria are of bryophytes life cycle. So their gametophytic plant body of bryophytes that is autotrophic. Autotrophic means they have the ability to produce their own food. If it's autotrophic, it is independent and is larger and is considered to be dominant and is considered to be haploid. So that's why they produce uh, gametes by the process of uh, mitosis. And that's body is a thallus. Thallus means which cannot be differentiated into root, stem, and leaves. So these are the root-like structure which is called as rhizoids, which encode them and absorb nutrients for the plant body. And they have a, let's suppose, male and female sex organ are present in same body. So their female sex organ is called as archegoniums. That's called is archegoniums. That's a female sex organ. So female sex organ, that is called archegonium, which is being divided into two portions. Lower portion is called the venter. That is called is uh, belly. Lower portion, that is called is a belly, a swollen portion. And upper portion is called is a uh, neck. So they have a this uh, female sex organ archegoniums they have a egg also called as ova also called as oosphere is present and is haploid upper to them they have a winter canal cell winter canal cell is present and another one, neck canal cell is present. Neck canal cell, ventral canal cell, egg and oa and oosphere is present. If there is a monoecious, so they have both male and female sex organ are present in the same body. That's a male sex organ that's called as enthradiums. Enthradium is considered to be the male sex organ. That's a Enthridiums. And inside enthridiums, they have enthyrozoids are present. They contain enthyrozoids. And enthyrozoids are considered to be the male sex cells. These are the male sex cells. And single enthyrozoids have a biciliated sperm is present. They have a biciliated sperm is present which has been covered by a thick layer of mucilage this mucilage then later on dissolve in water so these enthyrozoids they are produced these are the enthyrozoids when enthyrozoids mature they comes out and they have outer covering mucilage so this mucilage that has been dissolved in water and they release by ciliated sperm by the process of chemotaxis. So chemotaxis, this sperm moves toward the female sex organs and fuses with the female sex cell. When this sperm fuses with this uh, egg oa or oosphere, so what happened? So fertilization occur. So they need water for medium. This phenomenon is called as hydrophilus. Hydrophilus means they need water for fertilization and pollination process. So they will form zygote. 
जयगुड इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड इज ऊस पोर सो दैट इज डिप लाइट इन नेचर फ्रॉम जयगुड इम्ब्रियो इज डिवेलप एंड फ्रॉम इम्ब्रियो अ नेक्स्ट स्पोरोफेटिक प्लांट बॉडी डिवेलप सो बिकॉज स्पोरोफेटिक प्लांट बॉडी डिवेलप फ्रॉम गिमिटोफेटिक प्लांट बॉडी सेम प्रोसेस सेम मेकेजम लेट सपोज इफ वी ड्रॉ दिम ओर हेयर दैट वॉज द गिमिटोफेटिक प्लांट बॉडी राइट सो दिस गिमिटोफेटिक प्लांट बॉडी दे हैव दे हैव स्ट्रक्चर्स इन हेयर अ स्टेराइल बॉडी दैट इज प्रेजेंट इन दिस स्टेराइल बॉडी दैट इज कार्ड इज पेराफाइसिस this sterial body they are called paraphyses which separate them from one another now when this sporophytic plant body they develop from gametophytic plant body that's a sporophytic plant body this sporophytic plant body this uh, sporophytic plant body is considered to be heterotrophic heterotrophic mean they cannot prepare their own food so they get food from the gametophytic plant body and uh, that's why that's considered to be dependent and that's considered to be small and as well as recessive and as well as diploid which consist of three parts lower portion is called as a foot second that's one is called as a foot seta and this one is called as sporangia so these are the three parts of this sub plant body and this whole that is been covered by a protective layer this the name of this protective layer is called as sclepra they give protection to them inside the uh, sporangia spores are produced inside sporangia spores are produced in these spores are produced by the process of uh, meiosis so these are the spores now these spores are haploid in nature and these spores they have a two layer outer layer is called is exine and inner layer is called is entine exine is made up of cutein and entine is made up of cellulose there may be some difference uh, composition uh, is well now this uh, spores when it's fall down it will produced an irregular shape body that's called as protonemata and then this protonemata again give rise to gametophytic plant body so gametophytic plant body gives rise to sporophytic plant body and sporophytic plant body gives rise to gametophytic plant body this phenomenon is called alternation of generation which regularly taking place in them now if uh, we uh, observe the sporangia so sporangia is a cup like structures that is a cup like structure sporangia in this mouth that is called a peristome peri mean around and stroma mean mouth around the mouth and they have a lid like structures which we call them operculum is present a operculum also called is lid that's cover this uh, uh, spore the, for their protection purposes now the bryophytes uh, they have been migrated for uh, for the, the the plants when it's migrated from the uh, from the water toward the land round about 4 million year ago 4 million year ago the plants move from the water toward the land mean to develop the tracheophytes a plant uh, now so that is actually uh, the uh, bryophytes life cycles so bryophytes are uh, the most plant that's around about 2.7 inch height is there uh, and they form a velvet structures to the surface of the plant body uh, so uh, these are the uh, 
different uh, mechanism, different step involved during this uh, life cycles. Uh, after that, uh, there are some economic importance of bryophyte as well. That's like uh, a peat moss or peat box, which increase the fertility of a soils. A sphygnum is used for horticulture purposes. Uh, what are the lean adaptation of bryophytes? How they have been adopted? Mean uh, initially plants uh, they are living in water uh, when they migrated toward the land for around about 400 million years ago. So first purpose that is they developed the bryophytes, multicellular plant body in conservation of water. Mean initially uh, these algae they were unicellular they cannot retain water so water is the most important for the life processor. So they developed a large number of cells and then they have developed a such cell they can uh, store water. And second, absorption of carbon dioxide and absorption of uh, water. So they also, uh, by the process of diffusion from region of higher concentration toward the region of lower concentration, and whole surface of the body they have used for this uh, purpose. Uh, then they uh, produce a heterogamy. Heterogamy uh, gametes, they are produced two different type of gametes. One is a male and another is a female. Male sex organs called enthridium, which enthidocytes are produced, and female sex organs called zygonium, uh, when OA is produced. The sexual production is important because due to this process, the variation occur, crossing over take place. While in case of sporophytic plant body, uh, they produce a large variety of the plant, but they are of the same kind, so that's why they cannot resist and no variations occur. And they also develop a protective layer on their fixed organ as well. Uh, a leaf-like structure, like yule is present uh, in, around them. And uh, there is an also alternation of generation occur, which uh, the gametophytic plant body gives us to sporophytic plant bodies, sporophytic plant body gives us to gametophytic plant bodies also have happened. And they have also developed embryo formation take place. Embryo is an important for the variation purposes.